let's initiate sir a very warm good afternoon to everyone from national center of excellence data security council of india i puneet pahava manager marketing and industry relations welcome you all for today's webinar on digital id and digital id wallets in this rapidly evolving digital landscape where trust is the cornerstone of every transaction the need to secure and reliable identification methods has become more crucial than ever before today we will explore the concept of digital id and how it has emerged as a modern day imperative for enabling trust in various domains i would like to introduce the speaker of the session mr rama mohan reddy founder and ceo digital trust and the moderator of the session dr sarat chandra babu advisor at national center of excellence dsci welcome sir i would request dr sarat to kindly take it forward and share the bio of our respected speaker thank you puneet uh, a warm welcome to all of you for this important uh, technology session on digital id and digital id wallets and modern day imperatives and as uh, puneet has given in his uh, uh, inaugural uh, comments uh, the importance of uh, digital id and digital wallets in this uh, modern era especially the world is transforming into digital organizations digital businesses and digital nation national level for example india digital india is where the sort of speak so every uh, member every citizen participating in different services requires an identity right this identity has to be a digital identity and it's not only an identity it should be well trusted and it should be secure so the where there are various imperatives uh, various uh, controls which needs to be addressed and we need to gain knowledge of uh, how this digital id and digital wallet uh, id wallet were implemented right from the implementation uh, use cases and also how in indian context this is moving are uh, some of the key issues uh, professor reddy would be addressing and i just wanted to briefly introduce the speaker he is uh, well known amongst the it um, uh, entrepreneurs who have moved from very uh, fundamental research to a product level thing uh, and also the products which are being used world over i would briefly introduce uh, professor mohan uh, mohan ram mohan an entrepreneur technocrat and firm believer in creating value he is widely recognized and highly acclaimed expert in the field of eid digital id he has uh, led challenging national engagement across middle east asia oceania and africa helping the governments devise and execute key digital transformations leveraging eid and digital id as founder and ceo he leads team in digital trust with visible raw passion to create unmatched value through continued innovation outside of digital trust ram mohan is governing council member of cyber security center of excellence set up by data security council of india and he is a regular panel speaker and passionate about mentoring entrepreneurs he is an avid reader and a singer too probably if we have time at the end you would throw a hint of his expertise but uh, what i feel is uh, sir being an expert here uh, let us listen to him on this important uh, Uh, you know the uh, uh, idea and uh, which is actually needed need of the hour at every level so uh, without losing much time uh, i would request uh, professor mohan reddy dr mohan reddy to speak on important uh, uh, talk and uh, uh, people who have doubts probably they can put it in the chat box which would be taken up at the end of the talk and intermediate if there are any specific questions we will see as the session goes sir over to professor mohan reddy Uh, thank you so much so uh, much dr sahith garu and uh, preet and uh, my pleasure and i am honored to be uh, a speaker in this session uh, as i rightly said uh, this is this is something where my passion meets the business i mean that that's the uh, uh, context and uh, when the when the world is moving towards the, the digital transformations uh unfortunately trust is in deficit so therefore how do we deal with it if trust is in deficit in any ecosystem uh it is likely to head uh, towards a messy and a confusing uh, situation 
so we will in this session we will see um, uh, how digital id and digital wards wallets are evolving as a problem solver and to enable trust in the digital economies um, with this uh, brief introduction i think uh, i will start sharing my screen is my screen visible yes sir yes. Uh, you can put in All right so uh, due to the context of digital transformations uh, this is what is the modern day imperatives to enable trust in the digital economies in the real world the trust uh, has different uh, shapes uh, trust between two individuals is different from trust between two businesses and it is different from a trust between government and business and business and uh, business but uh, how does it work and how do we visualize the trust in the digital world is uh, today's uh, burning topic and the world is uh, on several forums world is discussing uh, this aspect uh, when we say trust it is not just the security it is a legal validity of every transaction and every contract that is happening in the digital world and therefore when when it comes to the legal validity predominantly the core needs to be the core infrastructure to enable trust needs to be uh, driven by the government and of course the enterprises will have to adapt these trust services so that they stay legally valid and compliant in the digital economies so this is what briefly we will go through and when the uh, uh, there's a there's a huge identity crisis confusions and complexities as far as identity is concerned and this is where digital identity digital wallet and digital signatures play a significant role and this results in a transformation of how enterprises will have to look at identity and access management especially in the light of digital trust and uh, if you look at uh, uh, the world or uh, the, the entire world is divided into different regions like africa southeast asia uh, apac middle east and within within africa for example it's a east africa west africa so there are a lot of migrant laborers from one country to, to the other country within the region so how do we deal with identifying those migrant workers when they cross the border and reach the other countries for the livelihood i mean they want to earn there and how do they qualify them how do we identify them there therefore uh, the the countries can be enabled with uh, providing some uh, benefits to them as well as hire them to work so this is the context if you look at the any 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 transaction related frauds they can be mapped into a combination of either identity or id fraud you have an id document and then you 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 make a, a duplicate of that or somebody else makes a duplicate of that identity fraud identity fraud deals with impersonation like somebody somebody tries to be as if it is uh, uh, you so therefore identity fraud is another thing documents fraud you have bank statements you have uh, land deeds land sale deeds and you have incorporated certificate of a company so there are a lot of documents that are issued by the government and various enterprises and which are required for the business transactions whether it is the physical world or the digital world this is the reality and then the finally transaction fraud uh, when i say transaction it could be transaction data somebody manipulates the transaction data or somebody manipulates the audit related to the transaction data so therefore if the if the if the digital world or digital economies will have to be trusted all these four problems have to be solved so but then the problem is problem to be solved is how do we enable trust in digital economies uh these are the important phrases comprehensive so it cannot be uh in silos it has to be comprehensive inclusive 
inclusiveness is to include a majority of the population if not the total population in the digital world citizen centric especially when everything is digital a lot of data related to the citizens is available in the digital world so how do we make sure that citizens are taken to a focal point and then uh, design and architect the systems which allow citizen to have control on uh, his or her uh, data finally it has to be legally compliant so let's look at the trust trust uh, uh, thing so it has various uh, it's like a need levels the risk management and security is a fundamental and foundational to the trust your your it infrastructure security cyber security that's all given in the trust model and then comes the first thing which com uh, comes is the compliance then ethical and social uh, responsibility privacy is one of the very very important and strategic uh, objective and finally the actualization level is the uh, trust and it, if it has to be uh, driven at a national level there has to be cohesive efforts across the leaderships and there has to be an executive commitment the governance strategy principles policies processes culture everything has to be aligned so that the country adapts the trust models rather than uh, enterprises trying to fix this problem so obviously when when it is at the national level uh, we'll have to have a multi-stakeholder ecosystem approach so let's look at where digital identity and wallets are to be used where wherever you are asked to prove your identity you prove your id and prove your identity few examples could be hospital schools enforcement agencies so somebody wants to verify your driving license it's a uh, how do we do it uh, digitally banks banks is one of the key uh, stakeholders in the entire ecosystem e-services now if you look at the other side when in, into the digital world the digital citizens are confronted with the multiplexity of uh, the problems i have i have five bank accounts and internet banks and i have access to 10 different government services and i have many digital payment wallets accounts and etc uh, all these all these uh, enforce a very strict uh, so 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 to say the password uh, policies change of credential okay instead of saying password we'll say credential now how do i remember so many complex passwords and so many complex credentials so you end up writing somewhere so therefore to solve that there needs to be one extremely strong identification mechanism which establishes both your genuinity of your id document id document as well as your identity so that with one strong authentication mechanism all services can be accessed so therefore the the citizens are sure and citizen it makes it uh, easy for them it makes it very convenient for them yet secured and compliant with the regulations because this this initiative has to be driven by the government itself and therefore the 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 digital identity and digital wallet is an important uh, piece in the transformation so digital identity deals with your id and identity wallet deals with all your documents and the related verification so you have your documents on your uh, id uh, on your uh, trust platform which typically today is starting with mobile as a platform so which means that all you there, there is a mobile a digital id wallet where you can personalize your documents your id your driving license your passport your you, you can think of any document and these are these are driven and uh, uh, controlled by the international standards like iso standards and things like that. another view of the entire thing is that the world uh, especially the developing economies uh, the likes of world banks and undps they are they have something called sustainable uh, development goals now the combination of digital id and digital wallet that we are talking about enables the countries to 
meet these sustainable development goals uh we have we have talked about all the aspects that is uh, that, that that are listed here like for example privacy protection of data uh mitigate the usage of ids to promote inclusions empowering people and mutual recognition of identity systems across borders which is what is called regional interoperability but however the current scenario is uh, is almost like a crisis confusions and uh, complexities like what we have highlighted look at this infographic a billion population lack an official proof of identity on the planet earth and 60% of that is in africa and imagine a person exists physically in this world which uh, who cannot prove himself to be that individual it's a most horrible situation that one can be in so therefore this this crisis uh, needs to be resolved and the likes of world bank and undps by 2020 30 they want to solve the problem and these are bundled under sustainable development goal uh, 16.9 as per the uh, guidelines of uh, international authorities like uh, uh, world bank and undp extended by that let's say we have an identity and look at how many ids we have you have the foundational id which is like your civil registration national id and population register universal resident id and things like that. and you have your functional ids voters tax passport driving license and you have uh, uh, and many countries have something like an online identity which is the national pki they are they have uh, digital certificates uh and which which are which are compliant with the it laws and added to that to prove your identity national id systems have your biometrics and the delivery of the foundational id is in 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 many occasions in a smart card or a electronic id which is machine readable id and uh, the digital identity is something which uh leverages the strength and the legal validity of the foundational id which is issued by the government and it is unique it, it is like something like to start with it is something like an author uh, number uh, that's a unique identifier uin for an individual and associated with it is uh, PII of an individual and a personal identifiable information like your name, date of birth, sex, and things like that. And uh, associated with it is your biometrics. Associated with it is your uh, digital certificates, which are required for online transactions, for authentication, and and you know make sure that your transactions are uh, tamper proof. and integrity protected and people cannot manipulate your manipulate the transactions and documents so the the digital wallets are those uh who are uh, which are in the digital form that can be personalized on a mobile phone into the wallet uh, uh something like a mobile a digital id wallet and these are required uh to for 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 let's say for example somebody wants to verify your driving license and uh, in the today's context if the driving license is a smart card and then you require a special device for you to read that smart card and then verify your uh, credentials and on top of it if somebody wants to verify your biometrics let's say fingerprint uh the these the the requirements of that special device uh, gets complicated and then it goes on it not only is expensive but uh, uh fundamentally it is expensive and then who actually funds these device infrastructure is a big question so smartphones with the proliferation of smartphones the smartphones are making it easy for uh, you know such uh, verifications any document verifications simple it is a mobile to mobile verification rather than uh, having a need for special devices um Uh, special devices uh, for verifying the documents now on top of it you have social ids 
and uh, and you have your corporate IDs. Uh, so th these are these are various uh, uh, things that complicate the things further. So digital ID. Imagine that. Sorry. Yeah, just uh, one point, uh, Mohan. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about digital wallets and when you say that they are all smartphone based, do you think yeah. that uh, the government introducing the digital lockers would become redundant? Just uh, I'm curious. Um, not really. Uh, okay. Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, because those the, the population who have uh, smartphones, the digi digi locker becomes uh, redundant. Number one. Number two, any digital trust or any digital economy has to have a, a multi-stakeholder inclusive strategy. So how do we how do we include people who have just a basic feature phone, and how do we include people who have no phones? It is evident and it is uh, uh, inevitable and irrevocable that the digital transformations are a way of way of life because it has uh, owing to the situations like COVID and all that we it seems like the world is left with no other option but to go digital to make sure that there is a cost of business or cost of transactions are optimized and it is convenient so all these advantages come with disadvantages which is which is how do we solve with the trust so that's the whole uh, issue so therefore digital lockers are relevant but for a different set of populations not may not be for uh, people who have uh, smartphones right thank you So we we'll, let's go deep into a little deep into uh, uh, digital ID. Like I said, it is a unique identification number first. Typically, a national ID number. Like in in our context, it is Aadhaar number. Identity profile, which is which is nothing but a PII, including the biometrics and digital credentials, which is a digital uh, uh, certificates. Typically, there are two significant activities in trust. One, authenticate yourself. The authentication establishes. Uh, the id and identity of the individual and once the authentication is done then the the service providers will define what are the services that you are eligible for based on based on their own criteria etc now this is one use case of our digital uh, uh, id the second use case is you should be able to make sure that every single transaction is uh, uh, is with with the cover of non repudiation integrity protection and security and for which you necessarily need to have a digital signature so in 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 digital world digital authentication and digital signatures are a core mandatory uh, aspects so it establishes trust in id and identity verification authentication and uh, if you look at if you look at the entire ecosystem whether it is manual or, or real world or digital world there are set of document issuers now when i say document like for example birth certificate marriage certificate company registration or company incorporation certificate like and land land deeds and there are set of and licenses for example there are set of document issuers typically govern and there are the citizens and businesses to whom these documents are issued the, on the other side, there are relying parties. For example, a bank could be a relying party. Now, if bank says that any business loan processing, I would need only digitally signed certificates issued by the government. Let's say, for example, incorporation certificate digitally signed. So the bank will be able to verify your incorporation certificate digitally and authentic with authenticity. And such verification mechanism uh will have such an evidence that that it stands in the court of law and that's how the compliance and uh, 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 compliance is mapped into the regulatory requirements now these requirements could be sector specific banking may have their own regulations telecom may have their own regulations and etc so therefore a combination of uh, digital id and digital signatures so far is, is a way is, is the core and cornerstone of trust i mean no trust no business no trust 
the entire thing becomes uh, chaos, almost like a civil war. Uh, we visualized uh, uh, a bit of us, and then okay, if you look at the brand, my trust, uh, it's our brand, obviously. So for for everybody's understanding, I just used my uh, uh, or my trust as a example. So this is how a mobile platform can look like. It is expected to provide the convenience, confidence, control, and compliance uh, to the citizens. Well, like I said, digital ID and digital walls, unless they are citizen-centric, nothing will fly. And it, it, digital world will be a lot more chaos. For example, uh, we have something called uh, Do Not Disturb, DND, which means that if I enroll myself, uh, my, my mobile number, under D and D, I'm not supposed to get marketing calls. But after enrolling, my the, the number of marketing calls I receive increase. So how how do we give that confidence to the citizen that once I register myself in D and D, I will not get marketing calls? That's the that's the confidence that you know the citizen should have. So it needs to be therefore multi-stakeholder. One, one agency may be following that, but then if there is a leakage in another agency, then it, it will not uh, work. So therefore, any a digital trust or a digital ID and digital wallet initiative, which cannot provide convenience, confidence, control, and compliance to the citizens, especially the control, my privacy settings, uh, uh, for example, any profile of mine, if uh, a government or uh, any uh, data uh, holder has to share with any service providers they shall obtain my real-time consent and on my consent only the data can be shared not only that the data can be shared only for a purpose and uh, for a specific period of validity now it is if if that is shared with a service provider like bank now the proof uh, of are approving that the bank used my profile only for that purpose and within the timeline specified rest the liability of proof rests with the bank itself now how do we incorporate and how do we enforce that yes that is that is the complexity and that is the thing that we need to resolve Unless, uh, otherwise you know it is not really uh, the trust and confidence it, the, the comprehensive integrated uh, uh, platform could look like this. The underlying infrastructure with cybersecurity, IT infrastructure, and security tools, and various things. There are some foundational services, there are some core services, and there are these trust services. And uh, we, we, many countries like for example many countries are taking india as a as a role model and example in terms of the national stacks for example we have the national the upi uh, stack payment stack and we have Aadhaar uh, stack so using those stacks they the, the multiple entrepreneurs make big out of uh, uh, the innovative uh, solutions like for example fintech is possible only because they we have these stacks available at the national level so innovators can use these and innovate services and innovate service delivery to the citizens and the businesses and so such a such an ecosystem will enhance the entrepreneurial capabilities and success of entrepreneurial capabilities in a given uh, country uh, i'm not going into the details of you know each of these components but then there's a broad view of how uh, uh, a central architecture of trust services can look like and some of the trends that we are talking about uh, as far as the trust is concerned uh, is let's say there is something called smart africa trust alliance ea it's a it's a european interoperability law so what european union has done is that the they have created a regulation which is applicable across EU states, which means that any European uh, Union member can digitally interact, which is legally valid, with any other uh, person in a different country. And the such a transaction or a, such a contract is legally valid in both countries. So it's an interop legally interoperability 
regulation of course what does it uh, what does it uh, leverage yes digital id and digital wallet digital signatures and electronic id of uh, specific nations they don't force people to have one common id similarly you have west african union with their operability uh, initiative so these forums just examples but they are all they are all working towards two things enabling trust and achieve interoperability in the digital world and especially when it is digital world there are no physical boundaries and it is supposed to stimulate cross border uh, economic activities thereby the the world will progress uh, economically some of these initiatives uh, across the uh, world singapore singapore has done a solid digital id program uae pass united uh, arab emirates ug pass uganda and i am happy to mention here that ug pass is our uh, program and that we are running ug pass program so the wallets wallets are like i said it's a it's a it's a id wallet safe wallet in the mobile now people might say that mobile is a very hostile environment so how do we deal with uh, threats and vulnerabilities of the mobile platform so it is expected to use these the uh, secure stores and key stores and uh, the blockchain on the mobile also is becoming more and more popular and the standard for the uh, the digital id or wallets are evolving and the first standard that evolved was an iso 18013-5 uh, there are different standards one for uh, general uh, mobile documents and one for the driving license because this standard started with uh, driving license as the first step right so the, the typically the ecosystem has uh, a wallet uh, on the mobile platform and also a verifier a uh, verifier also is an app a uh, secure app on a mobile device and uh, the communication between the wallet platform and the verifying platform is over multiple channels one is ble um, uh, bluetooth light energy and nfc nfc is something that is supported and that needs to be supported as per the standards and it's possible to have online and offline uh, verifications uh, for some people who who have more more interest in the technology side of it so there is a uh, there is a transmission layer there is a session layers there is a mdl and mdoc layers and so yeah it's it's a very well defined structured layered protocol which is iso ic protocol uh, this is an important thing which is uh, which enables the confidence or which empowers citizens and then instills confidence in the citizens which is basically privacy now if you look at the top side government has uh, many departments and ministries in the government has a lot of our data somebody has driving license uh, somebody has identity somebody has my uh let's say land records uh, somebody has uh, a health record somebody may have my criminal records so therefore any of these profiles the 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 thumb rule is that do not attempt to centralize all these profiles and then have a service let these independent data providers be on their own and then let let us have a, a centralized uh, platform which acts as a coordinator between the end customers business uh, uh, the requester which is the service providers end customers are citizens the requesters of the profiles are basically citizen service providers be it government or be it private like banks and uh, telecom and uh, various uh, uh, government benefit delivery uh, departments and these data providers uh, have the the different profile so there needs to be uh, this is this is the privacy by design there needs to be a consent platform which takes the request from the service providers takes the real time consent from for that request take the real time consent from the citizen 
and then along with both the request and the consent it communicates with the data providers gets the profile the request the consent and the profile together is shared with service providers with a purpose with a timeline to use that profile and erase the data most importantly in privacy erasing data is more important and it is not just deleting data and the liability of proving that they have used the data only for this purpose and they have erased it after the usage is done and that rests with the service providers who is requesting for the data profiles of the situation this becomes one of the core key uh, elements of the trust so we have seen so far digital id and uh, digital wallets with a privacy uh, framework and then any document or any uh, uh, contract needs to be signed in the digital world we have something called uh, two concepts here one is the digital signature and uh, ec typically if i as an md of the company has to send a letter to let's say government agency two things will happen on my letterhead i will print the letter i will sign as the individual and i will also fix a round seal of the company so that it is legally valid and then this letter goes uh, wherever it needs to uh, go uh, how do we deal with it in the digital world one you as an individual i need to digitally sign the document and there is, that's where digital signature comes into the picture for the legal entities uh, like like organizations we issue or we we need to issue something like an e seal electronic seal electronic seal also is nothing but a digital signature mechanism but it has a different uh, process and uh, protocol for example can anybody in the organization affix an e seal on the document definitely not so therefore there are these you know the authorization roles and various things that we need to take into consideration while defining the workflows for document signing and e sealing the uh, documents so this is an important again an important element to enable trust it and <coughs> sorry <coughs> so far we have seen the solution to the problem of id and identity and we have seen the solution to the problem of uh, needing to carry the physical id document and we have also seen a solution to the problem of uh, protecting the privacy of uh, digital uh, citizens now this is something which ensures that the documents cannot be manipulated this is like document signing for example a bank issuing uh, a statement of an account to account holder and with today's uh, pdf editors and well, lots of latest technologies we all understand how these statements can be manipulated and bloat up the numbers submit those bank statements and probably get higher and higher uh, loan amounts by by just manipulating these documents so how do we make sure that these documents cannot be manipulated this is where digital signatures and easy comes into the picture yeah so uh, i think this this uh, uh, this is covered uh, in a way um, for example like i said there are certain sort of document issuers there are uh, which issues documents to businesses and citizens and relying parties will rely on this genuinity of the documents of course uh, they have to verify to believe those documents so there are these verification uh, services and not only that in in, in some of the some of the uh, situations and uh, use cases the documents need to be notarized mm. how do we deal with notarization in digital uh, world in fact this is a this is a bigger concept legal professionals are involved in it and then the notary is a, a larger concept and this is the this is the, the indication of maturity level if a country is doing notarization online for the contract signed between two businesses two individuals individuals and business individuals and governments and governments and businesses if notarization also is done online that's an indication of maturity so we we have seen uh, independent uh, um, solutions to all the problems that all the four pro frauds that are possible or any transaction frauds can be mapped into those four of uh, fraud areas that we we saw in the first slide itself one id fraud identity fraud document fraud and transaction fraud 
the initiatives or the technologies or the the services that we have seen so far will solve all these uh, four problems obviously if this is the government hosted uh, service track how do we how do we make sure that the enterprises will embrace these integrate these services into their uh, business workflows and business uh, systems so the way they have to look at identity and access management has been transformed it's no more identity and access management it is digital trust wherein the the iam becomes part and parcel of it typically this is what uh, the identities uh, and their access from behind the firewall uh, to beyond the firewall so there is a transformation that identity access management used to be behind the firewall now due to the uh, the transformations it, it goes beyond the firewall and it uh, sorry and so far we have we have seen only with uh, human beings but then in digital businesses and digital government there are machines there are things so step one you deal with human beings and then make sure that there is a trust and then you have to extend it to machines as well as iot iot trust so all these things together make sure that there is a trust in the digital at least the countries have realized this need and then started with fixing the problem when human beings are interacting in digitally fix the problem of trust and this is a, a, a depiction of a pictorial depiction of borderless or uh, uh, perimeter uh, modern iams well, i think i'm not going into uh, details of this now so architecturally the integrations framework is is, is getting transformed when you say integrations what is those integrations you have on one side the the business uh, systems and uh, the the on the other side you have a host of trust services and identity and uh, access management services which will make sure that you not only fix the identity and access ciam but you also fix the issue of trust by having the integration of your business systems with a digital id digital wallet and digital verification and digital signature infrastructure services which are provided by the government so the approach the the, the architecture is becoming like an integrations gateway which has identity and access management authentication and single sign on frameworks uh inbuilt into this rather than going for uh, siloed iam products so the world is transforming towards iam products being part of the integra uh, enterprise integrations uh, uh, framework so to say so that's okay we have seen uh, with the people and uh, businesses how this digital the need for the digital economy is affecting the way they have to look at the 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 trust services they have look at they, they have look, they have to deal with identity i uh, id and uh, the digital contracts and transactions and now the 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 other aspect that is also evolving like i said initially itself is the region, regional uh, collaborations uh, we we just took an example of uh, africa and how do we make sure that let's say there is a there is a there are a set of countries in a region say uganda tanzania kenya rwanda east africa uh, uh, east african countries now how do we make sure that there is a identity provider interoperability so that the id and identity can be established of any country's citizen in any other country's citizen once this fundamental problem of id and identity is resolved service delivery is the next step and which is which is up to the service providers and service providers will have to rely on this trust and uh, people are calling this as a circle of trust right and this again is an indication of maturity not only the independent countries are looking at uh, digital trust 
the region itself is able to collaborate and cooperate in establishing the trust uh, in identification and uh, identity and the, which is where which is where eu uh, uh, european union is moving towards of course they are also in pilot stages and uh, uh, ei das which is an interoperability regulation so moving forward and i believe most of these regions will come up with uh, interoperability regulations a, a typical scenario could be let's say tanzanian citizen uh an ugandan citizen crossing the borders how they can prove themselves that they can prove their identity through the digital id mechanism so the trustees through us <laughs> <coughs> sorry the channel is controlled by the protocols like saml open id connect because in today's world most of the uh, most of the um, uh, authentication and uh, uh, authorization protocols are standardized uh, so we we use uh, standardized protocols to share the id profiles uh, by let's say uganda id provider uh, to let's say tanzania id provider and once the trust is established on the id and identity the service story, uh, can happen yes that's what i i have to say one you we started with what are the broad possibilities and then we said okay a combination of digital and digital wallet and digital can solve majority of these problems but however if the citizens have confidence in the entire system uh, it has to be citizen centric so therefore the privacy by design is uh, one of the core elements of this model and uh, not only the human beings but then moving forward it will it could be iot's and machines which, which will be part of the businesses and we'll have to uh, address the trust uh, let's say between a device uh, being uh, uh, device interacting with another device how do we establish the trust a machine is interacting with another device another thing so therefore how do we establish the trust so those are the uh, uh, future things and then once a trust is enabled in a given country how do we make sure that there is a, a, a cross border trust which is exchanged uh, by allowing the independent countries to do whatever they want to do of course they they need to do things as per the standards so in summary mobile digital id and id wallets the new norm offering convenience control confidence and uh, compliance to the uh, digital citizens it needs to be done properly uh, so inclusive strategy is an important thing and it is looked at as a social justice and you can't leave out some portion of the population uh it enables citizen service anywhere anytime transformation of digital trust programs into a revenue generating model so what actually is happening here is that many of these countries uh, look at this as a uh, investment or an expense but but these countries are slowly realizing that to have the sustainability of these uh, trust programs the entire trust enable trust uh, uh, program has to be transformed into a revenue generating mechanism uh, rather than you know, just as an expense privacy is, is is a critical thing legal evidence key to the empowerment and enforcement agencies and this is it so let's let's create a vibrant ecosystem to enable digital economy fully trusted and this is the slogan and this is the motive and this is the vision uh, many countries are driving and digital trust as a company will be able to help these countries to enable trust in the digital economies um, thank you so much and uh, uh, any questions or any discussions are most welcome now i hope thank I you mohan time. and uh, yeah thank you mohan who vividly brought out the importance of uh, digital id and digital wallets and also the ability to enhance the trust and security in digital transactions. It is also, you have given that trust, security, and convenience in online transactions contributing to the growth of digital economies, enabling a wide range of services and interactions in this area. 
these are you know nicely covered right from the different types of frauds and how digital id and uh, digital wallets are important to con contain these uh, various frauds to enhancing the trust in the systems whether it is uh, citizens or businesses or government so in this context i also have a couple of questions to you uh, one is uh, in indian context while your experience and your implementations happen in elsewhere uh, in indian context uh, what is the present scenario and how uh, aadhar which is considered to be the uh, you know the unique id for every citizen would help in uh, digital id and digital wallets this is one and also i would like to know the what is the kind of uh, opportunity space for the startup companies in this domain to uh, work and what are the gap areas in technology so some of these things if you address for the benefit of the participants it would be nice yeah sure um so in the context of india aadhar uh, definitely uh, is is a good start i would say uh, in its present shape it may not be uh, fully ready to achieve the end to end objectives that we have articulated during the session but it is an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, good uh, uh, step and we have been able to allot a digital id which at least a unique number and um, and we have we have been able to enroll the biometrics so those two problems are solved and then the identity profile like name date of birth and that's available now one one probably one thing missing in this is that associating the digital credentials like for example digital certificates with the digital id profile so in aadhar uh as far as my knowledge goes they are not issuing the uh, digital certificates to the individuals aadhar signs so when we say aadhar based signing uh, dg locker the aadhar has a set of uh, you know the certificates and then with which these documents are signed of course they are verifiable but then i have not signed it with my certificate right so i think one extension could be the pki percolating to the uh, usage by the citizens and businesses is one is one element i'm sure uh, uh, everyone in aadhar is aware of it and uh, last week uh, i i was attending an event called id for africa and i happened to meet uh, uh, the authentication in charge of uh, aadhar uh, so it seems like there is a there is something called aadhar 2.0 initiative which i think is expected to solve this particular uh, and are not solved but extend uh, right now aadhar do not have a solid um, a mobile platform for citizens for empowering the citizens while we have m aadhar but it it is limited to certain uh, aspects so i think the transformation from 1.0 to 2.0 will be this mrr will be enhanced to something like what we have just shown as a, a trust a mobile trust uh, platform a uh, second part in terms of the entrepreneurs uh, opportunities for uh, entrepreneurs uh, india india uh, look at the fintech Uh, boom in india and there are so many fintech companies and they are all possible only because the kyc is made easy by stack india stack and the the payments are made easy through upi now this simulated lot of innovations in uh, service delivery so we we basically the opportunity space in 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 my view will be in specific segments sectoral uh, solution innovations for example how do we adapt these uh, trust principles to solve uh, problems in let's say agriculture the 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 rural economies uh, so things like that can the people can innovate service delivery by leveraging these uh, trust principles and the services uh, so therefore uh, the countries will have to move towards and they are moving towards creating a national stack to stimulate the innovations not only that uh, i am not very sure whether we have it in india right currently or not but many countries are moving towards something like a digital trust center of excellence and extremely focused on trust center of excellence wherein they invite uh, academicians innovators the industry 
and uh, they and the the regulatory authorities of specific sectors like for example bank if it is banking the rbi so in in line with those regulations how do we innovate uh, the processes how do we optimize the service delivery process these are the areas where sector specific innovations it can really 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 simulate Yes. Uh, thank you, Mohan. Uh, I also wanted to know, uh, like, uh, what are the, uh, what is the impact of new technologies like uh, um, AI and uh, blockchain kind of technologies in this domain? Is, is are these technologies are being used uh, in the present day solutions, or what will be the impact? Well, when I talk about blockchain, probably it's the mostly positive impact that is it will make more and more uh, secure and trusted. When I talk about AI, it could be both ways. Right, it will have a positive impact as well as it can have a negative impact as well. The world is actually uh, more worried about AI and its impact on various things. So, in the context of digital ID and digital wallets, now uh, what do you think uh, uh, the impact of these two technologies? AI ML definitely is a threat. See, for example, if you are talking about uh, face biometric verification, and then today there are technologies which can generate a nearly a real picture with all liveliness checks passed, uh, which definitely is a danger uh, and uh, it, it poses a threat. But then if these threats are not presented, the innovations will not happen. So it, it goes hand in hand. There will be innovations and therefore thereby there will be threats and there will be, there'll, there'll be further innovations. Uh, so therefore it's a chain and who is advancing faster defines the safety and uh, trust. But yes, technology, if there is a, the fire can be used, the match stick can be used to uh, light a lamp and uh, or otherwise also, and you can, you can just burn the entire house. So therefore, it is appropriate usage of the technology. So somebody is hell bent on burning the house, somebody is, somebody is looking at providing light to the world it's it's a it's a game and it's a fight all across but yeah one thing which is which is evolving and, and, and i really like uh, mosip uh, mosip is uh, open source uh, identity platform they say that the biometrics will have to be generated by a qualified device and a certified device so if a device is not certified so you don't consider the biometric coming from that device at all this is this is one one initiative which is uh, happening there but then it has its own limitations like for example it has a ma major impact on convenience it may be inconvenient see on on mobile phone like a self sovereign uh, identity i can i can identify myself by uh, taking a selfie and then going through a facial biometrics verification but then if my, my 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 mobile has to be certified it's impossible i mean so therefore uh, it's a chicken and egg and then a lot of innovations are happening uh, where you control the source you authenticate the source this is where iot uh, trust will have to uh, chip in and i'm sure uh, the, the 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 mobile manufacturers also will look at it and will be forced to look at it uh, so that whatever is evolving from from that is uh, is of highest uh, security levels. So yeah, it's a it's a reality. I mean, we can't really do anything about it. It's a technology which is available for both good guys and bad guys and innovators equally. Maybe bad guys are more advanced many times. That is the fact, actually, in many of the technologies. Yeah. And however, you have given a kind of uh, clarity on many of the aspects related to the digital ID and digital wallets. I am very sure that the participants are enlightened with this. And also, I'm happy to know that there's a lot of scope for the industry to look forward to, especially in Indian context. And this is uh, the present day of uh, self-reliance and Atmane uh, and all that. So it will play an important role. I'm happy to see that an Indian company goes abroad and provide solutions in various countries in this domain through you. Um, it's a really a wonderful opportunity for all of us to listen to you. Thanks for your 
uh, you know, valuable time and kind of providing this your thought process, sharing your thought process to all of us. And we look forward to many such opportunities in future too. Uh, thank you, Mohan. I would like to, at this point of time, uh, thank once again National Center of Excellence of Data Security Council of India, which is a combined program of the uh, Data Security Council of India and Ministry of Electronics and IT. As part of this, uh, you have given the talk as uh, we keep uh, conducting these uh, talks as part of the acceleration of uh, cyber security solutions. And uh, the main one of the main objective is to make the uh, reach the research into the productization, commercialization through this NCOE, research happening in academic institutes and R&D labs in India. So we look forward to your mentorship to many companies with your vast experience in future. Uh, look forward to the thing and I would like to hand over this to Puneet for uh, closing remarks. Just just one, one, one little comment before Puneet uh, chips in. Uh, for, for everybody who is attending and then the, the aspiring entrepreneurs, just watch out Aadhaar 2.0. There could be a lot of opportunities in Aadhaar 2.0. And uh, uh, the government is expecting a lot of POCs uh, in this field. In fact, uh, uh, the, the Aadhaar authentication in charge uh, uh, invited me to uh, do a POC of what we think is feasible and all that. So watch out Aadhaar 2.0. Uh, and the more and more uh, national level uh, stacks and APIs and all those are uh, to be built. So therefore, see, nobody will tell you that this is exactly the solution which will make you a billionaire. But it is up to you to innovate in a, in a given sector. So segment specific, uh, rather than making it horizontal, which is applicable all for all the sectors and which is what we are doing and then it is it is it is a long drawn story and if somebody is really really having deep pockets and uh, 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 sustenance power they can attempt but vertical solutions will like let's say fintech there could be other tech solutions in various other segments so that's where i think uh, 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 an ample opportunities in india will evolve with other two dot great thank you so much Mon, for that valuable input or to Puneet. Yeah, I'm glad to be a mentor to the people if they desire. Puneet Tarshisti. Yeah. I think uh, I will take this opportunity to conclude. Uh, thank you once again, Mohan, for your valuable time and thanks to the organizers, Puneet and Shristi, for their valuable support and uh, connecting us over this uh, good platform. And also to the participants who have uh, you know, the patiently listened to the talk and I'm sure that uh, the participants would uh, get highly benefited. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to DSA, thanks to NCOE, Ministry of Electronics and uh, all uh, stakeholders of this event. As we look forward to meet you all with such uh, enlightening talks in future too. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I'm leaving Mohan. It's fine. Yeah. How Thanks do we trying to look uh, look for yeah, a button. Uh, the red arrow top on the okay. top of the microphone you click that yeah, it will say leave, leave. I, I can do the neat pull sir um, i believe there's no questions in the chat section right okay yeah i have not seen any questions yes yeah sure sure I'll, I'll do thank you thank you so much everyone thank you thank you Puneet.